speaking to you from beautiful Philadelphia. I think most writers reach a point where they confront the concept of theme and try to work out how they can start using theme in their own writing, if it's a necessary part, does a story need a theme in order to be good writing. I think one of the reasons that theme, along with so many other aspects of writing, is confusing for the writer is the situation where the developing writer learns. There is a producing end of writing and a receiving end of writing, and to oversimplify the whole thing, you have writers on the producing end, and, and you have audience critics and academics on the receiving end. Now, theme <clears throat> is a concept that is very useful on the receiving end of a story after it's been pr produced. And so a lot of we writers learn about theme, and yes, it is true that the stories that survive over time, that, that are still paid attention to, even, even though the change in the language from decade to decade makes it more difficult for people to enjoy these stories, it is true that these great stories, these powerful stories, most of them have a very clear, strong, well thought out theme. But the problem with people who want to write, who want to learn how to write well, is we're faced with a situation where we have to basically reverse engineer it because we're learning about theme in, in the whole environment of the receiving end. In, from from academics, uh, you know, school settings where 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 it's very good at teaching you how to appreciate a story, but it doesn't face the real life situation of of what processes you have to go through to actually write a story. A theme can be the subject. It can be the subject of a talk. If someone is going to like the theme of this video is themes. But we're talking about writing a story. When you write a story, how can a story have a theme? Often when we look at, at great stories and we are examining the theme, the premise, and the moral of the story. What do these three things have in, in common? And Yes, some stories there is a moral to the story. If you look at Aesop fables, that is def these are stories and, and their whole each little story, the, the, the punchline is the moral of the story. There is confusion about between premise and theme. And for the practicalities of someone who is actually writing, premise and theme are, are very similar. One of my most highly recommended books, one of the most influential books on my approach to writing, is The Art of Dramatic Writing. Leo Segre, in The Art of Dramatic Writing, he described how a great work of dramatic writing needs a premise and that basically a premise is like a formula. It can be summed up as a statement that, you know, giving someone power corrupts them inwardly. That, that basic premise can, can serve as the premise to the story. And, it, you know, also we can say that it can serve as the theme of the story. Theme, premise, the moral to the story, these are very helpful concepts for anyone on the receiving end of a story. But us writers, when, when we learn about these and needing to deconstruct them, each of, us ha each of us go through our own struggle about how can we start using this? How can we actually start using this to write to 
we know we're writing well. We know that we're writing it well, well enough to enjoy it ourselves. How can we, we use it to become better writers? I know that when I, when I was going through my reverse engineering of theme, premise, and the moral to the story, I actually sat down and I was going to write the premise for a story that was already very fully conceived in my imagination. So I did. I came up with several different themes to my story and it was an interesting exercise. So I want to describe how writers can use these concepts. How do we need them? Are there concepts that are better fitted to people who are in the process of creating new fiction? Premise, the moral to the story, are found in great storytelling. Why? Why, why is it that, that theme makes for such powerful storytelling? So what it is basically, or at least what I think it is, is that when you experience a great work of fiction, you, you, it gives you a very, the overall work gives you a very strong feeling. Let's make a, let's make a comparison. If you ever meet someone with strong charisma, basically that individual gives you a very strong feeling. So you can meet someone who is, is just filled with, with optimism or happiness or excitement and it's contagious and you remember that person. You, you, you know, the next few hours after you have talked to them, that strong feeling is, is contagious. It's still resonating within you. And charisma is not good. It can be, you know, it could be sneaky or that, you know, someone is up to something or creepy or, you know, you can meet someone and later you, you know, you're haunted by what were they after? What, you know, what, why were they asking for my address? <laughs> you know, they can have a very strong charisma of of intentions that may serve them very well, but not necessarily you. And, you know, charismas, there, there is such great diversity of strong charisma. It's just that it needs to be very strong, that, that you know, someone, you know, can have a very strong, despondent charisma, and its effect on everyone they meet is that, you know, they, they, it's entertaining to people that this individual is going through life with such a, a strong feeling of despondency. And I think, and I'm, I'm no scholar, but I think that when we look at great works and we decide one reason they're great is because they have a premise or there's a moral to the story or there's a theme to the story, basically these stories have very strong charisma. Everything, all of my wondering, deconstructing, trying to figure it out, trying to adapt concepts to become useful tools for writing, all of this confusion went away when I realized that basically what we're talking about is looking at a work of fiction as a whole. So when you want to, when you have a, a story you're excited about and you, and you enjoy improving it in, in any way that, that you can think of and learn how to, to make it even better. One way we can do is we can look at what, what kind of story is it as a whole. When you want to actually sit down at your desk, pen in hand, and say, I'm going to work on the theme, I'm going to work on the premise, or the moral of the story, if your story does have a moral, or if it does have an axe to grind, if you're, if you're working on a story that wants to push a certain world view, to actually be able to develop ways of working on your story in that way, basically, you want your, you know, a story is the, the, the trees for the forest, you know, you can't, can't see the forest for the trees, 
when we're working on a story, often we're just working on you know scene from scene, and that's like walking through the woods. So we can't we can't look at it from bird's eye view at the entire work. When when you want to work on it in theme, you want to go ahead and take that bird's eye view. You want to look at your story as a whole and ask and 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 start inventing your own questions put together your own questions that can help you work on theme so go ahead and ask these questions and write these down because these will will help you first develop your own questions what kind of story is this is this a gritty is this a story of of evil people duking it out in a, a, a seedy, corrupt environment? Is this an optimistic story? Is this a, a, a humorous story, lighthearted, nothing too serious? Is this a horror story where the characters are slowly strangled to death and are are barely almost reaching escape their the tips of their fingers are are two centimeters away from escape but the life is slowly draining from them is this a, a, a story of you know someone all they have are their wits and they're let loose in the world and through harebrained decision making escape the great evil and win the dance, win the beautiful woman. And when you're asking yourself what kind of story, you're not, you're not talking about the genre, you're talking about what, you know, what kind of environment is, is that story. Keep in mind, what you're doing is you're working, you're developing the charisma of the story. And the first way you do this is by looking at your story as an overall, as a unity, as you need that story as a whole to, to pull together and support itself and, and have some predominant qualities to it that every different scene in the story will contribute to this overall feeling that you want to give the reader so that when they walk away, they walk away with that overall feeling infecting the way they feel. One thing to keep in mind is you do want contrast of scene. You don't want every scene to be like the one that came before it. You want to, when you contrast the scenes, you, you, you greatly enhance. If you have a funny scene right after a really hectic, you know, uh, if, the, if, if it turns up heads, they die. If it turns up tails, they live kind of scene if they're you know each the contrasted scenes can can enhance the effect of each other but when you, you when you develop a very clear strong idea of what kind of charisma your story is going to have you go ahead and use your your 3d not not your linguistic mind, but your, your, your space object mind, to imagine your story as, as an entity that has... Is, is this an entity with long talons and blood dripping off the talons, with razor-sharp speed and an absence of right and wrong, or is this a story that's a cute little fluffy animal that, that, that does adorable things as it grows and learns. I, I know my approach to writing is that I'm always, every day, trying to get my subconscious to help me write as much as possible, and for that reason I use intu intuitive thinking. And the way I do this is that I have a document called The Heart of the Story, and that this is basically where any idea that contributes to the overall charisma of the story, to the resounding themes of the story, to, to what I think the story as a whole, how I want it to, to affect the reader. The heart of the story, this is an intuitive way of looking at it, where any idea I have about 
you know, if it's a tragedy, how can I make it more tragic? If it's an adventure, how can I make it more exciting? These are, are they, they don't need to be, this, this document I'm not going to present to anyone. It doesn't need to be presentable. It doesn't need to be well written. The document itself doesn't need to be organized. It's any, anything that, that I think can in any way give me a, a very clear, strong awareness of my story's charisma. One thing that I found really helps is to take everything I've already described and use it to view and read stories I really enjoy. And then this gives me an understanding of what it means to, you know, looking at a story with great charisma, what it, you know, can appreciate exactly how that story is unified about I can appreciate how that story, each part of it, comes together as a whole and appreciate how strong an effect it can have on me and that that strong effect is one of the biggest reasons I love that story. So in, in writing the next draft of the story you're working on, this is where we become critics. We look, we look, oh, it's such a, I love this part, this one part of the story, but it just doesn't support the theme. It doesn't add to the charisma of the overall story. It distracts from, from the, the, the strength of this environment, you know, what, the environment of what kind of story it is. It distracts from it. So I can take it out, I can put it away in the file cabinet, and when I'm working on another story I might might use that character or that dialogue. But here, for the sake of the unity of the story, I have to sacrifice it. So write down these questions. For each each not, if you have a, a story involving hundreds of characters, of course you wouldn't do this, only for the most predominant characters in the story. How does each of them contribute to the overall feeling of the story? Another question, what can I do to push the theme of the story? What can I, what can I do if it's edgy? How can I make it edgier? So how do you give your story charisma? That, that seems like a very elusive question, it all has to do with clarity. The stronger the mental image you have of the charisma of your story, the more it's going to come across when you write it. The more you're going to understand the, the subtle nuances of how you unify the story and how you contrast the story. What you want to do is you, you want to meditate on what you want your overall story to be like. The more clarity, the more resolution you have to this mental image, the stronger your and when and of course you need to use it while you're writing. You need if when when you're writing particular scenes, when you go back down into the forest and all you can see are the trees, keep in mind that somehow each small part that you're working on needs to add to the chorus of the of the overall story. I hope this has been helpful. If you like my videos and want to get me back, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend, share this video through LinkedIn, Twitter, Reddit, all those ways that, that this link can can find its way into different audiences would I greatly appreciate that one part of being a writer is reverse engineering all the the stories we enjoy ourselves if you have any if you've come across any anything that that you think other people who watch the video might find helpful when you have reversed engineered your favorite stories please leave a comment i make these tutorials so that i can Always for this always moment in the story when I can get the word out about my own fiction. It's at solomation.com. The name of the story is Terrible Immunity. 
And as the theme, as the title implies, it's a tragicomic adventure. My poor protagonist, Lily, so confused. Please, if you have the time, check it out at solomation.com. Illustrated, narrated storytelling put in video format. I have t-shirts, there's a link below. All, pre all proceeds go toward making more of these videos, working on terrible immunity, and hey, get me a cup of, gets me a cup of coffee in the morning when I sit down to creative work. Thanks for watching. I hope that your, the stories you're working on are going very well. I hope that you make a lot of creative discoveries in the weeks ahead, and have a good day.